Alright guys, so in today's music video breakdown, we're gonna do Fame Freak Show. I posted this video actually a few days back. If you guys have not watched that, click the link somewhere here. I'll link it in this video. If not, you guys can wait to the end of this breakdown and go check it out. Trust me, a lot was in this video as far as set designing. We did three sets in one room in four hours. A lot of shit went down. So hopefully into this video, this is gonna break it down and help you guys a lot. So let's just dive in. <sighs> Yeah, suicide go through my mind It's do or die, base you and I When I'm with you, it feels so right Girl, I feel so high We just gotta evolve The world don't revolve around you cause you think so We used to freak out, have a little freak show I told the peaks I don't want to see, but Yeah, I'm a freak show Alright, so we're gonna start off with the camera that we use for this music video. As usual, that's what we do, we break down the camera gear. So it's gonna be the Panasonic S1H. I don't own that camera anymore, I have the Sony a7S III, but this music video was shot six months ago, so that was the camera that I had at the moment. Everything you guys watched is gonna be shot in B-Log. Everything was 4 to 2, 10 bit, 24 frames or 60 frames per second. Uh, some shots I think I did shoot at 1080p, 120 frames per second, in case you guys are wondering. We used the lenses for this video was a Sigma 24mm 1.4 art lens and we also used a Sigma 50mm 1.4 art lens. Those are the only two lenses that I used for this music video and the gimbal that I used was the DJI Ronin RS2. So it's a newer gimbal from DJI and I did use the focus puller because the S1H does not have reliable autofocus so I had to do everything manually myself just with the focus pull that it, that it comes with if you do buy the Pro Combo just in case you guys were wondering on the camera gear that I used. Now, as far as the lighting breakdown, the lights that we used was all Nanlite, and we also had the Asteras. So let's get started with the story on this video. Was really, you know, it was a hot secretary. He has an eye for her and, you know, he's working and he's always catching her. So basically in this one, he falls asleep, goes into his head, and then he ends up getting caught. The secretary ends up pulling him to the chair, ties him up and basically seduces him, takes off her clothes, and he's like, you know, like he's living his, his what he basically what he always wanted to at the end, only to find out that was all a dream. And he's back to reality. She wakes him up and be like, get back to work. And he's like, fuck, I didn't get that. I didn't get what I what he, what he dreamed of. Like he wished that was reality. So quite simple on the storyline. We're going to get started now with the first set of this music video. Now, as for the lighting on this first set, so the way we went about it was I had one nine light Pavel tube. I think it was a two footer or a four footer, but we had it right on top and I had it on a faulty bulb. It was, I think it was on a flicker mode, but it was very slow and I, it basically to give it a faulty bulb look, right? That was mainly like his key light, I guess you can say. And then we had a mix panel on the back end and that was blasting towards the back where the old computer is to give it some separation. And that was to create more depth to make, basically make the artist, you know, pull out from the background, just make them pop. And I did use the Force 60B projector to beam in the back with a gobo effect. Again, just to add some texture, it was very subtle, but it, for me, it still played a big part into grabbing that image and making it look the way it looked. So that was that. And then we, I did use the Force 300B. It was kind of weird how I placed it, but I basically had it like on the back end, kind of beaming, but I wanted to fill in his face a little bit more. And I think I only had it like at 10% or 15%. And that was just to kind of get his left face where the camera was basically coming in from. So that was what I used uh, as far as lighting. We did haze the background, a very small, very portion. We didn't have, we didn't go crazy. I see a lot of people go crazy. And in order for us to really maximize it to make it look like a bigger set, so I had two sets of as, as I talked about earlier on, where I had two shelves, and they were basically, you know, to make it long, where he was sitting right behind it. But once I needed to get him looking over, where she was basically, you know, also doing like a box, basically doing packaging. I had to go ahead and, and grab some of the shelves and put it on that side to make it look like it was long. It was like a lot of shelves and stuff. So again, play with what you got, uh, make it work, choose the right lenses, create the right depth. Uh, just kind of look around, you know, sometimes you don't need this crazy big actual setup to make these things happen. You just gotta choose the right lenses and all that. So the last thing that we did use was there was a little Nanlite 5C that we put with tape inside the lamp. The original lamp that we had on this desk that provided like that tungsten look, it was too harsh. It, it kind of filled up the whole desk. I didn't want that. So we actually ended up taking out the bulb and we put a Nanlite 5C on it. And we obviously were able to control the lighting. So let's move on to the second one. So now for the second scene, in order for you guys to maximize things, you know, changing a lot of sets in one room could be an ass. It's freaking hard. It's not easy. So 
while this moment while i had everyone basically you know start taking everything out and uh, basically you know we're gonna have a blank black canvas and then from there we're gonna put the asterias and so forth we'll talk about it right now during that process i had them take care of that put the drummer in there and all the stuff that i wanted to happen i grabbed the model because i only had it for about two hours we took it to the cloud room but she had to change it to all white because he did talk about white angel or something in the lyrics i forgot exactly what it was but I needed her in white and I wanted to put in the cloud to give it a whole different look as well. So basically, you know, while I was knocking something out, I had my crew over there setting up. So if you guys want to maximize production time, you guys will need extra hands on set. So other people can like basically, you know, help set up on other areas and you're concentrated on just the filmmaking and the directing. Four hours is not a long time for everything that we did for this video, all the lighting, all the changes, it was a lot to do. So. Yeah, now let's jump into the second set. So once we got the drummer in there, we got the guitarist, we got all this going on. Now we added the stairs in the background. I added a Nanlite popple tube on top as the key light. There was no key light, that was the key light. And then I had one of my assistants, they were with the Force of 60 and the projector, literally just beaming it around. I shot that about two times and you know, something didn't look right. So what I ended up doing is wetting the floor and that caused the look that I wanted, which was, you know, it adds reflection. When you're using lights and the and there's water on the floor, it just causes a reflection that it looks very, very good. Looks high production and just, it creates an aesthetic look that it just looks pleasing. So I ended up wetting the floor and the background, I filled it up with a stairs. I had it on strobe effect and I had a Nanlite Pavel tube overhead as a key light. To be honest guys, the Nanlite Pavel tubes, as far as skin tones, you get some outstanding skin tones. I've used the Nanlite Power 2 for a lot of actual key lights that people think I'm using softbox and all these butterfly. I'm just using a damn Power 2 and people will get shocked when I tell them that. So the Nanlite Power 2s can be a really, really good light for skin tones. It, it creates a really nice soft look to the face. So keep that in mind and try that. You guys will thank me later. That was the second set. Once the second set was done, we gotta get the drummer out of the way. Everything gotta come out. And the third set is basically the paint with the paint plastic that we had going on. So for this paint set, what I ended up doing, and luckily the artist was down, was he had a blue shirt. And one thing I didn't mention in this video is I always focus what are they wearing and what kind of lighting I'm gonna go to counter that and make them pop, make the image look as beautiful as it can look. So always look at what the wardrobe of the artist is. For this particular video, I didn't ask what he was wearing, but when he showed up, I always try to go opposite. The beginning portion, I had him dressed like he was in the office, right? So that was very simple. I didn't want it too crazy. But for the second set, you know, he was wearing yellow. So I wanted to go ahead and add blue lighting in the background. But now for this third set, he had a blue shirt and I wanted yellow. I wanted more colorful. I wanted this to pop. So we kind of went with yellow paint and I had one of my homies basically just paint splatter all over his body, his shirt, his face, his hair, really just to, you know, enhance it and give it the pop. Now in the back of this artist for his third set, we had, what we did was you, we put tape and we used the plastic paint to have it on the back end. We put a lot of different colors, colorful colors on it. And behind it, because it's kind of transparent, we put the Asteros in an X shape and we had it on a rainbow effect. And that is another reason why I got the stairs for this particular set. We had four of them and literally just had it on rainbow effect to cause it to blend with the paint that we used for this third set. And for the key light on this set, it was the Forza 300. That was the key light and the mix panel 150. I had it on flicker mode. Again, to cost energy, this song needed energy. So I needed to have like flicker from time to time. And that's pretty much it for today's music video breakdown for Fame Freak Show. Again, if you guys did not watch that video, make sure you guys click the link or I'm gonna place it in the description below. It takes a lot. I know you guys need the proper budget to make it happen, but sometimes you guys can make shit happen with literally little budget. And I'm actually taking a music video that has a low, low budget and I'm gonna have you guys guess on a future video so you guys can find out for yourself how much you guys can actually do. Now, if I fuck up and don't do a good job on it, then I guess, but it does matter. You know, obviously I know to a certain extent, um, there's only so much we can do with a certain budget, but again, don't let that be the excuse for you guys not to create epic videos. And uh, that's pretty much it, man. Hopefully you guys stayed this long. Freaking, this says 25 minutes. Hopefully this video is like 15, no, not even 15. If I could break down to 10 minutes, that's cool. Appreciate you guys. Love you guys. I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace out.